What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in this video, we're continuing our series on learning to model SketchUp in 30 days. And so I wanna make sure in this series, I also teach you some of the tips and tricks that I use when I'm modeling. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about modeling with selections and how I use that to save time. Make sure that you watch this video. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, so this is something I do in most of my videos and I don't think I've really explained it. This is going to be the case in both the free online version as well as the desktop pro version. And it's basically a tip where I explain to you how I'm selecting multiple things at one time. So um, first off, to select normal things, right, you can just single click like this. You can select edges, you can select faces, other things like that just by clicking on them. In addition, you can also select things by doing a shift click um, in order to click on multiple different things to add them to your selection, right? So that's pretty simple, um, no big deal. However, one thing that I've been doing and I haven't really explained it, is if you double click on something like this, it's going to select whatever face you double click on as well as all of the connected edges of that face. And so there's a lot of interesting things you can do with this, but it's also a big time saver. So for example, let's say I wanted to pick up all of this geometry right here. I could either move my camera around and try to drag a box around it, or if I just wanna pick up multiple different things, I can just do a shift double click in order to select the faces and all of the connected edges that are associated with those faces. Now where this gets really helpful is let's say we have a circle like this one. Right, so I've got a circle in here, and let's say that the edge gets exploded or broken up into individual parts like this. And this might be a little bit of a bad example because you could just drag a box around this, but let's say I wanted to pick up all of the edges around a more complex shape or something like that. Well, what I can do is I can just double click on the center of the face and then do a shift click like this to deselect the face. That's gonna allow me to pick up all of the edges around the outside. So anything that's connected to this face are gonna get picked up like this. So another thing that you might not know is you can also triple click on something and it's going to pick up everything that's connected not only to the one face, but to the object that you have that you've triple clicked on. So if I double click, right, I'm getting these individual faces in here. If I triple click, like this, it's going to pick up everything that's connected that isn't grouped um, associated with this object. So let's say for example that I had a box over here, right? So something like this, and let's group that real quick. So if I triple click over here, notice how it's not going to pick up the box because the box is a grouped object. So triple clicking is for selecting the raw geometry associated with an item like this. And it's gonna pick up everything that isn't grouped or that's inside of the group that you're in um, that's touching the face that you're triple clicking on. So practically speaking, there's a lot of interesting applications for this. One of those is let's say that we had a sheet like this. So let's say I wanted to make a perforated sheet. Well, right now, what I would have to do to do that is I would have to come in here and single click and select all of these faces in order to delete them out, right? So you could do that, but it's gonna take you a lot of time. However, what we can do instead is if I was to double click on this face like this, remember that it's gonna pick up the face and all of the associated edges, right? So this is basically selected everything when I double clicked except the faces of these circles right here. And so then what we can do is remember that if you hold the shift key on your keyboard and you drag a box, this is going to both add and remove things from a selection, right? So if I hold the shift key like this and drag across something, it's going to deselect what I had selected and it's going to select what I didn't have selected, right? Well, in this situation, what that means is that means you can double click on this face, then hold the shift key to do an inverse selection and drag a box across this whole thing. Well, what that's gonna do is that's going to deselect all of the edges that we had in here, as well as this big face, and it's going to select all of these faces in here. Now, if I tap the P key like this, and I push pull this up, notice how I've been able to really quickly create this perforated sheet in here. Well, another thing we could do is let's say we created a sphere with the follow me tool, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a circle with the C key, then I'm gonna draw another circle standing up like this. Well, then I can select this middle circle, activate the follow me tool. So I'm gonna select the circle, activate follow me, and then click on this right here. What that does is that allows me to create a sphere in here. 
I'm going to move this over and I'm going to stand the sphere up like this. Okay, and so we're going to get a little bit tricky with this one. But basically what we can do is we can come in here and I'm going to take this sphere, right? And I'm going to select it. So I'm just going to single click in order to select it. Well, then what I can do is I can toggle hidden geometry on by going to my display and clicking on hidden geometry. Well, then I can do a shift and click and drag like this and I can select all of those edges. Well, what I want to do is I want to unsmooth those edges. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to pick the option for smooth edges like this. Well, what that did is that came in here and that took those edges and it took them from a like a softened edge to a non-softened edge. So now if I hold the shift key and I click and drag across here, that's going to deselect all of those edges and that's going to select the faces. Well, if I hit the delete key, what that's going to do is that's going to remove all of the faces, but leave the edges in here. So you can use this to create things like wireframes inside of your models if you just want edges in here without faces. All right, so one other thing that's really important you understand is when you're trying to select things with the selection box where you click and drag like this, the direction that you drag is going to make a big difference. So you may not have even paid attention to this, but notice if you drag from left to right, the box that you have in here is a solid box, right? It's just a solid line. But if you click and drag in the other direction from right to left, Notice how this is a different kind of selection box. What that means is that means that they do two different things. So first off, the left to right selection box will select anything that you have inside of the box. So notice how if I click and drag this across around this box into the middle of this object right here, it's only going to select the things that are inside of the box completely. So in this case, right, when I select that corner, um, it's only going to pick up the stuff that's all the way inside of the box. So like none of these get picked up or anything like that. However, if you drag the other way, so let's say I was to click and drag from right to left over here, notice how this box is going to select anything that it touches. So in this situation, if I click and drag across this corner, notice how even though these edges aren't fully in the box and neither is the face, it's going to select this edge, this edge, and this face. Basically anything in the box and anything the box touches. If I click and drag this further, right, it's going to pick up more in here. So the further I drag, the more it's going to pick up. And again, notice how it's picking up these extra boxes around the outside because it's touching them. And so you can use that to do a lot of interesting things, but it can really be a time saver when it comes to selecting things, right? So let's say I wanted to pick up the two middle rows in here. I could do a right to left selection this way, and then a right to left selection this way while holding the shift key, and I could pick up all of this at once. Well, now I could delete them out. If I wanted to, I could do whatever I wanted with them, but you can use this in order to really quickly pick up objects in here. So you can also use that to limit your selection if you're trying to pick up something complex. And then finally, and this is something that's at least in the free online version, I'm not sure if this one's on the desktop version or not, there's also a lasso select. And so the lasso select works the same way, right? If you click and drag from left to right, it's going to give you a solid box or a solid lasso that you can use to drag around objects, right? So see how I can use this to drag around objects and anything inside of that lasso is going to get selected. And so it does have the right to left functionality, but it's a little bit twitchy because if you cross it back over like this, notice how it gets solid. So that one's a little bit weird to me um, in the way that that works. So usually if I'm using the lasso, I'm just going to completely pick up everything that I want inside of that selection. Um, you can use that left to right in here. Notice how it did do some of that, but it's just a little strange in the way that it works. So if I'm gonna use the lasso, I usually just drag it all the way around the things that I want like this. So I don't really use the right to left when I'm using the lasso select, um, but you definitely can do that. But this can save you a ton of time when it comes to selecting and modeling with different things in SketchUp. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you have any questions about anything we talked about, I just love having that conversation with you guys. I'll link to the next video in this series on this page. Please remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done that. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.